And still side by side, getting into turn one. Let's see what happens here. See the. Uh oh. Uh oh. Looks like Vickers forced Hamlin off the yeah. racetrack. And behind him, Casey Saw Kane that. and Ken's at the bridge side by side, and Hamlin somehow gets back out in front of Casey Kane. Well, he's still battling right there. Tough spot to go too wide up through there. You see Casey Kane trying to go make a move on Matt Kenseth. So Boris said has gone to the garage here. You're right, Andy. It has given up. So it's uh, been a tough day for Boris, who had a good run going. Yeah, that's too bad. Here, these guys try to go side by side, Man. Andrew. And they're doing it. Look at this. Oh, Kenseth off in the grass trying to stay there. Still, still side by side. Matt Kenseth from 42nd starting spot, now being shown 14th. Who was it said Matt Kenseth wasn't a road racer? Yeah, <laughs> man, he made a great move that, right there, hanging tight. That was impressive. He's trying to hang on to 12th position in the point standings to be able to get in that chase again this year. A.J. Almendinger there in the battle. See here, Bobby Labonte in there. And the leaders are all in line. That's why we're showing you all this action here back in the pack. There's Tony Stewart, Marcus Ambrose, Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, and Greg Biffle. See some more guys trying to pull out here. Whoa, oh, Bobby Lagano gets a tap. Yep. I think Bobby was already a little loose getting into that corner. Logano's going to go by, so he's recovered from his spin earlier. Hey, Robbie Gordon, guys, is picking him off one by one. He's been on and off pit road a couple times once he got back on the lead lap. There he comes in that seven car. Yeah, we saw Hollywood Armstrong adjusting on those rear shocks. He must have turned them the right way. Now, I don't know if it's the way Robbie said, but he got him going. So. <laughs> he's up to 20th position. You see Paul Menard right behind Robbie Gordon and Ryan Newman, who's had a, a tough day, so to speak. Uh, he's worked himself back into the 22nd spot. Up front, Tony Stewart trying to get win number five at Watkins Lynn, 14 laps to go. Max Pappas under attack by a very aggressive Kurt Busch, and that is for seventh spot. Day. And Doc, he's not exactly happy with his car right now. One thing that was on his mind, his voltage meter was reading 11, which is a little bit low. He switched batteries and he only got it to the other battery and he only got it to 11.5. So that was on his mind. Plus, he hit a curb hard or something and he tweaked the front end, as he said it. So it may not be turning exactly the way it has been before. But I'm telling you, like you were saying, he is driving it. He is wheeling this thing, but he's got. A handful of Kirk Bush right here. Yeah, he's going to have to be on the brakes. Right? Well, he's going to lose that spot here. And Kurt Bush will get by him on the back stretch, heading into the inner loop and take that spot away. Well, that two cars, a fast oh, car. He's off in the grass, Bush though. Off. See if he can hold him back there. Hey, he just took a shortcut. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that is a legal spot that you can go through if you're able to hold it. Not <laughs> yeah, spin you can, out. You yeah. can hang on to it in the grass. Uh, they let you have that. The 99 car of Carl Edwards all over the back. Watch him move it inside and outside behind Kyle Busch for position. Yes, yeah, like as they run get a few laps on the tires, Kyle's car starts giving up probably in the center of the corner, like he was talking about, where he's had a difficult time in making his car turn. Starting to see a few shaded places on the racetrack, and that could change the way this track, uh, you know, affects different cars. It could help Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch right now just on the outside of the top 12 in points, looking in in 13th position. He has only had one top 10 finish in the last nine races, that being a seventh up at Loudon, New Hampshire. Well, the thing with Kyle Busch here, he wants to be able to go and be aggressive right here, but he also, he's got himself right now. It's Carl Edwards trying to make a move to the inside. Kyle keeps him back there, but he's got himself within about 55 points of that cutoff spot. We got another battle going on here with Martin Truex and Jimmy Johnson. That's for 10th position. Truex uh, really showing what a good road racer he is. This is a really good track for Martin Truex. Uh, he's done a great job up here, finishing the top five last year. Yeah, another driver just in front of them, Clint Boyer, that was needing a good solid day, and he's been able to produce that with his team. This is a point of the race as a driver that you, you've got yourself in a good spot. You're just hoping kind of things settle out here. The guys that were needing a, a good uh, good day, just 
We kind of continue on here, and if you can make spots, good. We've seen Carl Edwards duck out almost every straightaway, and I don't know if he's trying to keep his car cool or whether he's just trying to get out of the mirror of the, car, of the car in front of him. I think he's guarding that inside spot more. He just wants anybody behind him to know that if you've got any ideas about this, you're going to have to go to the other side to try to make your pass. He's been pretty consistent with that move. I mean, even when he's not in a position to make a pass, he pulls over to the right pretty far. Yeah, you so can see right there. Yeah, and it's just, and again, these things are hard to see out of, so he might be trying to get a little better view of exactly where that car is, even using this the side mirrors and things. And Kyle Busch oh. runs off the oh. racetrack. And this we'll time, Edwards will have a shot underneath him. See Kyle trying to hang on, but just can't. Now he's got going to have to uh, worry about Greg Biffle trying to take that next spot away. And that's going to be up in turn 10. Kyle will have the inside line in turn 10 as they turn left. Doesn't seem like Kyle's able to turn his car and get it and to where he's left. wanting it to go. And the more he tries to force the issue and he gets that pressure on him, then it's, uh, you see him make the mistakes. The best spot of the day for Carl Edwards all the way to third position. Carl started back in 33rd spot. We've seen Tony Stewart be consistently faster than Ambrose. I just wonder if they think that Tony's going to run out of fuel and they're doing, they're just staying where they want to. We haven't had a chance to talk much about Mark Martin today, the winningest driver this year. And although he is a three-time winner here, it has been a bit of a struggle all weekend for Mark. And right now, if he were to finish where he is, he would lose another spot in the point standings and move back to 11th position. Well, it has been a long weekend. They just haven't gotten the car to Mark's liking. They really just haven't had speed. And, and Mark says the harder he tries to go, the, uh, the slower that he goes. And there are the point stands. We might mention in Mark's defense, you know, he hasn't been here in two years. And so he hasn't been on a road course, but once that was an Infineon early in the year with this new car. And you see how close it is for that 12 spot. Kyle Busch now just 58 points back. It was over 100 when the day began. He was behind Matt Kenseth. Tony Stewart, they say they're iffy on fuel. So was the uh, Marcus Ambrose car. Here is uh, Carl Edwards back in third spot. He stands to be the big gainer. And by the way, Carl has never won on a road course. One of the surprising thoughts when we go come here and realize he's been good so many places, but he's never won a road course race in Sprint Cup competition. Yeah, with only two a year, there's not that many opportunities and uh, a lot of great road racers out here. Yeah, you have to have a lot of things to go right if you're going to get yourself in that position. And as long as Tony Stewart's racing, you really have a difficult time in winning one. Well, he's in pretty good company because Jimmy Johnson's never won on a road course either. And Jeff Burton and some other guys there that have been awfully good at other places. There's Jimmy Johnson coming by and he's being shown back at 11th spot. And we're inside of 10 laps now. If Marcus Ambrose has any thoughts of running up there, I think we'll start seeing if he uh, can run Tony Stewart down. Let's check in uh, on Tony Stewart. Jamie. Well, Doc, you mentioned points a little while ago, and I'm sure there's a lot of Tony Stewart fans listening in right now, wondering if their driver has clinched a spot in that top 12 for the chase. If it ended right now, he's 756 points above 13th place, and that would be Kyle Busch. That is not enough to clinch a spot. He will have to wait till next week. And as of right now, he has 257 points over Jimmy Johnson in second. That is by far the biggest lead he has had this season, guys. Hey, you're right, Jamie. He'd need to leave here with a 781 point lead uh, over the 13th place car to clinch a spot in the chase. I don't think you have to worry about him being in the chase, but uh, it'd be nice to know. I guess if you're Tony Stewart, that when you leave here, you're in. Uh, he's virtually clinched. He's, he can actually yeah. run these races just like uh, he, he has clinched because he's not worried about that. Here's a 26 car, Jamie McMurray, who had been in the garage here early uh, to change the transmission back on the racetrack and now showing some smoke out of the back of his Ford. We still have some kind of problem here. Yeah, and this is a, you know, we talk about Tony Stewart and the points lead that he has. That's what's allowed him to really take a chance here. You know, if they happen to run out on the last lap, it's not going to be a big deal. 